and welcome to So Many Books. I'm your host, Tony Andrews, and today's guest is Kristen Higgins, author of Contemporary Romantic Comedy and um, award winner, award winning Hello. author from Durham, Connecticut. Welcome, Kristen. Thank you, Tony. Nice to be here. I'm really excited to have you here because um, I really love your books. Oh. First off, I oh, really thanks. enjoy your books. And I was fortunate enough to attend a workshop you were giving recently. And I was really interested in what you had to say about how you started off with a woman who had some kind of flaw or some kind of <laughs> problem. Tell right. me a little about that. First thing I always try to uh, think of when I'm writing a book is um, what's wrong with my heroine and uh, what's her difficult situation? And why is the hero the worst person she could possibly be with? <laughs> because when you're writing a, a book, you've got 100,000 words to use up, and you need to create a lot of conflict. So I always try to find out uh, what's wrong here, who's suffering, and how can we make them suffer more? Mm -hmm. so. Well, your, your, your upcoming release, which is called Too Good to be True, which I, which I haven't finished yet, so oh. don't tell me how it ends. <laughs> okay. But this this... The, as the title might give you a hint, too good to be true, is this particular woman has a little issue with um, telling some tall tales. Yes. Uh, Grace Emerson is uh, in a sticky situation. Her fiancé has dumped her for her younger, smarter, prettier, younger sister. And I hate it when that happens. <laughs> Um, in order for Grace to feel more comfortable um, with her family, who's, who's obviously looking at her under a microscope and constantly asking her, are you okay with this, and how are you doing, and you're so brave, um, she says, you know what, I'm great. In fact, I'm, I'm seeing someone. And just off the top of her head, she tells a lie. Um, this is a pattern for her. She likes to whip out imaginary boyfriends from time to time when she's feeling insecure. And I, I love this plot because I think it's something that we all do at one point or another as women. Um, I myself was on a flight to San Francisco, so you know it was a five-hour flight, and I was seated next to a man who was going to a Star Trek convention <laughs> as Mr. Spock. And so he was all very excited, and I got the whole live long and prosper thing, and, and he was chatting, and he was obviously hitting on me. And he said, so why are you going to San Francisco? You know, maybe we can have drinks. And, and I said, you know, I'm going there because I'm, I'm getting married. And <laughs> I wasn't. I was single. I said, yeah, um, I'm, I'm going out there to live with my fiancé before the wedding. And he said, oh, what does he do? And I just found myself lying very off the top of my head, very happily, very cheerfully, and very colorfully. I was engaged to John, the cellist in the San Francisco Symphony <laughs> Orchestra. Oh, you don't mess around. <laughs> we lived in Noe Valley. We had two dogs. And it did the trick. So um, I, I think it's something that we all do. We all say, oh, thanks, I'm seeing somebody, but you seem so nice um, under other circumstances. Yeah, under, uh, if I wasn't going to meet my <laughs> husband, the karate instructor <laughs> at the bar, I would be so delighted to, to have a drink with you. Right. Yeah, I think I have done that now yes, that you mention yes. it. Yes, yeah. So I wanted to see what would happen if she, if she, this lie mushroomed and mm -hmm. if she had to kind of run with this for a while. Well, I, I, it's, it's mushrooming, but that's as far as I've gotten, so okay. don't tell me what happens when it mushrooms. But I have read your previous books, too, okay. and you do seem to delight in putting women in difficult circumstances of their own making. Yes, it, yes. You, you seem to specialize in that. And the Thank last, you. The, the, the book that I previously <laughs> read, um, we had a good time, time in uh, San Francisco last year at the Romance Writers of America National Conference. Kristen and I were seated together at the book signing uh, because b our uh, books are actually published by the same mm -hmm. house, different lines, but the same house. And so we were seated together at the, at the book signing and I managed to snag an early copy then of the book that you had coming out then which was um, just one of the guys. And that was, that was um, tell us a little bit about that book, because I really like that oh, book Oh, thank a lot. you. I love that book, too. That's the story of Chastity O'Neill. She is the youngest of five children and the only girl. So she's got five older brothers. And her blessing and her curse is that she's constantly seen as one of the guys. Um, she is a large, tall, strong woman. She's very loud. She's very much a bull in the china shop. And she's constantly struggling 
with this, this being one of the guys, trying to get men to see her as a woman, and yet she's really comfortable with who she is too. Well, she's got some other difficulties in that regard because her whole family seems to either be um, a fire, either a fireman, what's her father, he's, he's Her the... father is a captain of the fire department, two of her brothers yeah. are firefighters, one is a cop and one is a helicopter paramedic, and Chastity is afraid of blood. She has a phobia right. around people who are hurt. So she feels that she's missed the hero gene. And one of the things that she wants to do is overcome that in some small way that so, she, so she can be a true O'Neill in her own eyes. Yeah, and so she puts herself in a situation where she's going to have to deal with it. <laughs> yes. But it's also one of the other things that's very funny is, is if because of who her brothers are and because of who her father is in these towns, if any of the, all the men she knows are either in the, or in the fire department or they're in the police department, or they're paramedics, and if any of them were to try to date her, her father or brothers would kill them. Correct. So she's got that issue too. She so needs that a brave was, man. That was really cute. Thank you. And, and I will be putting pictures of all the covers up on the, for, the, for the audience to see, but one of the fun things is you always have a doggy. We have yes, a dog on yeah, all of your covers. Yeah. And they put a basset hound on um, one of the guys, but it's not, I guess that's as close as they could get to right. the horrendous um, description of the, the drooling. Drooling buttercup, yes. Yeah, buttercup uh, that was her dog yeah. and, and that she adopts right. in that. She adopts that dog because no one else will. The mm -hmm, dog is giant ugly. and ugly and drooling. And now the previous book before that is um, Catch of the Day. Mm -hmm. And Catch of the Day is your <clears throat> second book, was just your second book. And um, something very, very exciting happened about this. Now, the Romance Writers of America, I'm going to educate our, our audience on this a little bit, is, is, a, is a very large organization, um, writers organization, and not just for writers of romance, but uh, writers in all genres mm -hmm. are members of Romance Writers of America. But they do put out the premier award every year, the most important award um, in the world for women's Clearly. fiction. Okay, <laughs> and it's called the Rita Award. And like if you went to the Academy Awards and got the Oscar and the biggest category in, in the Academy Awards is going to be Best Picture, for the Rita Awards, the best, the, the, the single title is the, you know, the, the ultimate Rita Award and you were nominated for Best Single Title yes. for your second book. But the really excited thing is bring it out here and she, she is. Won. <laughs> Look at this thing. And you want to know how much I envy this thing? <laughs> this is, can I? Is this, you may touch that? it. I may touch it. Okay. <laughs> That's the Rita Award. But um, it, it, this was really exciting because, you know, not that Kristen isn't a wonderful writer because she really is a wonderful <laughs> writer, but this was her second book. And you, you're accustomed to reading the nominees for the Rita Award. It's Who's won it? Nora Roberts, Jenny Cruzy, Jane Ann Krentz, yeah. who's, who's won this? And so the, the nominees come out, and, and I was sitting, I remember, in the lobby of the hotel, and people are reading the program, and they're going, who's this Kristen Higgins? <laughs> who's that? And it's like, oh, she won't win. You know, and they're going there, I'm like, well, I don't know, it's a really good book, you know? And they're like, oh, yeah, have you read it? I'm like, well, yeah, I've read it. And everybody is, is going, who is she? Who is she? And then when you won, it was just so great. Oh, thanks. And it was, uh, I was definitely a dark horse candidate. Uh, I, I was up with uh, seven other people, and I believe six of them were New York Times bestsellers. So it was quite a crowd. You know, and hardcover fiction, and hers, yours came out in mass market paperback. Yep. It was what straight yep. to paperback. So it was, it was tremendously As exciting. most romance novels do, the yes. vast majority of romance novels never come out in hardcover. Yeah. But